Back Chat Basketball Show back again hello at backchatpodcast.com.au if you want to send us an email or backchat underscore basketball on instagram ben malice to the right of me ben what's going on dan we're back mm. and we've got our street cred back to that as well i think we've got our nbl player we've got our pick up team Former. ready to go and uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> well it could be current I'm not yeah sure. greg guy is back welcome well, just, uh, i apologize return ready to go you're coming yeah. to retirement all the time i know i um this is a true story, Hang on, before you go any further. This <laughs> Reverse the bus back up. <laughs> this, this shows how long it was since Greg um, has been on the podcast. He texted me on the way asking what the address was. <laughs> <laughs> What's the address again, mate? I thought you actually wanted me to tell you the, the actual address so people can uh, come into no. this lovely establishment. Do not come. <laughs> no, I... Um, no, it wasn't that. I mean, I'm I'm horrible with uh, remembering a lot of things, um, and so yeah, I, like I obviously do this same drive every single week, and so I reckon I could do it, but I just want to make sure the Google sure. Maps uh, gets me here. So that's okay. No, I do the same. I appreciate time. you going back. I mean, you've had it like with my uh, absence, mm-hmm. Brady Manic. Fantastic. Yeah. If you haven't yes. listened, get on. Uh, what an entertaining uh, interview. And then obviously you, you two lovely gentlemen. So mm-hmm. I did have to message Dan this morning and saying, mate, am I allowed back in <laughs> yeah. to the studio? Um, so I greatly appreciate yes. uh, back on. Uh, it was a hectic couple of weeks. Had my charity gala dinner. Yeah. How'd that go? Yeah. Awesome. 600 odd people. Yeah. Very, 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 very successful for a number of reasons. Obviously financial uh, benefits, but no, really, really good to do that. So it um, was hectic. What, time s- what is it? Is it a stitch in time? A stitch in time. Yeah. yeah. So, Plug it. Do something. Um, yeah. Four, 15 waiters. Peter Ball. Been on the yeah, pod. Yeah. Uh, back chat pod. Uh, Tony Galati. Luke Shuey. Uh, Blair Boots. Evans. Um, yeah. A lot of... Huge. I guess uh, some of WA's favourite personalities. Um, yep. Yeah, you know, whining and dining. Well, not whining. They're not allowed to because of RSA responsibilities. But um, mm. yeah. All oh, right. So it was a drive-in. Yeah. No, no, no. They can't serve you alcohol. Otherwise. Right. Oh, so I they mean, were serving and. Yeah, they serve okay. you food, serve, serve you yourself. entrees, serve you, uh, serve you mains, and then provide a lot of banter and entertainment. Yeah, so, great. Uh, seven years we've been running it, or oh, six years. It, it was a little Huge. a little event I. I Organised in 12 weeks back when I was playing Wildcats. Um, and now, yeah, or many years later, 600-odd people at Crown. Um, Insane. Well done. Not a plug for them, but um, nah, it's good. Yeah, well, you're on a high. I'm on a huge high after this morning, the Mavericks taking down the Golden State. Yes. Warriors right. going shot for shot at the end. controversy, right? Well, like Steph Curry getting cold a uh, yeah, on a step he, back? Because he travelled. That's yeah, why he NBA got cold. Travelling. Plus... Plus, Ma- don't hate me. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I would just say as well, the people talking about the travel, right? Curry still got the shot off, right? And, and Max, it, yeah, it went Maxi airborne. defended yeah, him like correct. crazy. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't yeah. like he hit the shot; he got called off because of yeah, the travel. So. Mate, it was a bad shot. He got defended very well. That's Clay not Thompson why they lost look. the game. Yeah. Clay Thompson had the most open shot he's had all his entire career for a tie. Can we talk yeah. about uh, the the talk has been about Clay Thompson completely losing it and uh, like you know obviously in that period of time in a matter of games he's now shooting above forty percent like yeah. he yep. increases shooting percentile by seven percent just how outrageous that really is yeah um, the volume it, yeah it's it's absolutely nuts and even yep. how. Golden State is like, you know, obviously weren't on a tear. Um, but now, like, they're sort of like, yeah, they're back. Yeah. Like, just nothing. They can't play away from home. And their bench sucks. Yeah, it really got does. all these young kids going. And I think their starting lineup is one of the best units still. But yeah. their bench is just putrid. Their bench is full of guys that could just hit 40 against your team on any given night. But In like the G League, maybe. Yeah. yeah well, no, <laughs> it just doesn't happen. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. The, but, oh, what, sorry, the other thing about the shot percentage. Brady Manick, who we just spoke mm. about, he was having like not a I'm great, mad. and he's and he's known for his yeah. long range shooting, and I think within two games he was back about forty percent. Nuts. Yeah. So it yeah. it shows like it, it always evens out. Yeah. Absolutely. What's your take? Like, what was the longest injury you had in your career, and how long did it take you to get back to injury feeling? or shooting was injury? Because he's been out for so long, two years of not oh, playing. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, calf was my first. Like yeah, I did. I never actually completely got back from that. Like I had to have my off season, so I. My very first injury, I remembered like um, had a bit of a like. I remembered something being tweeted like Greg Hire has the most con- consecutive games without missing because right. of illness or injury. So I was like one hundred and forty three. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, this is pretty cool. Like that's a pretty good statistic. Oh, you never right. really see like you know when that's tweeted. Like mm. I'm never going to get most rebounds in a quarter or like I'd actually had most. Uh, Rebounds. Yeah, I was going to say that would be like a yeah, stat that so you that would, would yeah, get. but like nothing that's like really good. So I was like, that's actually a pretty cool mm. one. 
next game, turn on the <laughs> <for> next <laughs> training session, turn my car off, yeah, and was like out. I remember like going like, oh, this will be like a little injury and there was like a 10 to 12 like yeah, wow. layoff and everyone's like, it's an old man's injury and I just like, I was 25 and so I was like. Were you travelling with the team at the time? Nah, I so got you, you player got of the game. Like it was when we had DeAndre Daniels. So I yep. like, it was a year after James Ennis and so I was like, yep, fair enough. Like I'm not going to start um, for that year. We had Don, DeAndre and so even like, I was like, ah, oh, NBA draft pick like I'm gonna have to be on the back burner here again and then like from pre-season I was like I'm actually gonna leapfrog him like yeah, I'm yeah. better than him um like this is gonna be awkward he's a four-man playing in a three-man position and obviously like because of the success of Jimmy you know like they went the NBA route again and then we played the first game we lost to New Zealand um and I got brought on like I had this like absolute blinder uh, got uh, well not maybe absolute blinder but I had like a really good game got game MVP back then you got 250 bucks I was like sick like nice. that's 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 not too Voucher bad or cash no no like proper cash like pre-tax post-tax oh, envelope man. under the table oh, stuff ATO is not <laughs> listening so yeah. yeah no it was definitely like, never, cashy yeah, yeah like, an envelope full of cash 250 no, bucks no 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 they gave brown it paper bag full of dollar coins <laughs> <laughs> yes anyone that's listening it was that um <laughs> No, it was just gift vouchers. Anyway, um, <laughs> but um, so I was like rolling in Monday and I was like, this is good. I remember like killing it on training session. I was like, i got to slow down because DeAndre's going to get fired. Yeah, uh, he's going to get fired. <laughs> and um, yeah, anyway, I felt that pop and I was like, okay, this sucks. Like first injury and I just never actually recovered. So yeah, it was out for the 10 to 12. And then, yeah, I remembered... Um, it was like the worst injury ever. I got to the point where I came back and like re-tore it. So I sat out for a while. Most weirdest, like uh, we came back, we sucked at that time. So my very first training session back, Trev was like, uh, we, we got smashed. It was 36 degrees. It was like Christmas Eve or two days before Christmas. Gross. And so um, it was like a two and a half hour session. And so obviously like I was on load restriction, whatever. S&C coach was like, Greg, you've got two two drills left and then you're done. And then at that time I was like, I'm starting to get a bit fatigued. So they're like, all right, finish up here. Like no point. And then Trev's like, no, 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 do this last drill. And as I like took off, I felt it go again. So I was like, oh, I know that feeling. And then I was like, screw this. Like it's Christmas Eve. I'm livid. So I was like, maybe worst thing ever for my calf. I was like drinking beers in a blow up <laughs> pool because I was like, I've got to drown my sorrows. Yeah. And no, nothing like making it more internal bleeding from, uh, from alcohol. Thin, thin that blood as best <laughs> as you can. And then when I got back, I did it again on the road and they literally were like, it's – it's like um, uh, muscle fire. It's like a whatever. I can't know what it is now. But you're basically until it completely tears. It's like you're just going to feel that. And so mm. um, it was until the very last game of the season I tore my other one because of that. Calves are nasty too. Yeah, Did you think you were doing your Achilles or something worse? Well, that's what it got to the point where I was like stretching it so bad. Like even at training, I was like, I feel like I'm going to tear everything. Like it was like woeful. And then I done it for done it in the last game of the season so I got a corky on my hip Ooh. and um, I was like man this is like I, I can't catch a break and so my gait where I was running was completely done tore it and I was like I'm done this year is the worst year I've ever had and then like just didn't touch didn't do anything for 8 weeks and it was pretty good for 3 years there you go there's the intro that's, well that's good. we, we weren't expecting that that was, that was on the run sheet but there you go I snapped my ankle um, snapped land. your ankle yeah so I went up for um, a rebound as I do I was probably an offensive board as well channeling way into Greg Hire. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, came back down landed on someone's foot Ooh, yeah, that's turned nasty. like uh, green whistle snapped nah bro no, it was like a um, the bone that sort of holds between your your leg bone and your foot there's like a plate in there and it yeah. cracked the plate yeah. and I've been in pain ever since you still like issues. St still in pain and that was two and a half years ago yeah, yeah. wow ankles yeah. are nasty I never broke mine when I was playing soccer back in the day I went up for a header landed sideways my foot in a pothole and it was the size of this pothole. basketball I kid to not when I came down and I had a moon boot on for three months yeah it was the yeah. worst green experience whistle? No green whistle, oh, but I love a green whistle. <laughs> <laughs> haven't had the honour of having one of them yet. Oh, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, they did offer me some, something when they were putting the Pan cast on. <laughs> no, something I could, yeah, the, maybe the little thing that you put in your mouth. And yeah, I, said, I said, nah. Oh, you're, oh, too, you're tough. too tough. And you're as gone. they're doing it, I was like, 
please. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's like when your yeah. wife gives birth and you're like, yeah, sure, I have gas. I want to try it out. Like, and yeah, no, my wife did, didn't need it. So, oh, well, you look at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right, hero. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's jump into some NBA stuff. Yeah. Um, speaking of the Dallas Mavericks and the Golden State Warriors, Josh Green was pretty clutch in that game. I was telling Ben before, had no business taking the ball by himself in like the final minute, went to the bucket, took on Draymond, Clay, and Steph all in one play. Um, Lucas standing on the on the three line saying, what the hell, man? But he got the <laughs> bucket anyway. It was very clutch. Um, he's been having an absolute tear. You wrote about Josh Green mm. recently. I did plug the pick and roll here, yes. but I wrote about him on Monday, and it was interesting you explaining before we came on air here what he did this morning. Yep. It sounds like exactly what he's been doing all year he's shooting the ball yep I just checked it then the fifth leading three-point shooter in the nba now yep. so going almost 50 percent for the year but just better than the shooting is how assertive he is and it's funny how you mentioned that play i went back and watched a lot of his clips over the weekend and he's just become so assertive he's really getting locked and loaded from behind the three-point line and he's just jacking these shots up and first couple of years in the nba there were lots of turnovers he was tentative you could just tell that he wasn't really trusting his shot and trying to do too much and it's quite funny, right, Greg, how he's simplified his game, but he's become so much more effective now because he is just a 3 and D shooter role player. And around Luka Doncic, that's all you want. Need. And yeah. exactly, we saw it this morning that Luka puts up his insane stat line, a 40-point triple-double, if you don't mind. Mm. But then Josh is just putting in his 13 points, making his three or four threes. And if Dallas has any chance of having a deep player from, they're going to yep. need role players like Josh to step up. Totally. So if you see that, Ben, where do you see... How pivotal is his role going to be with the Boomers in this next sort of little cycle then as well? Interesting, right? That's a very good question. I haven't mm. thought of too much. I think in Dallas, he has the perfect basketball situation, doesn't he? That at the NBA level, he is a role player. That's, I think, Josh's destiny. He's probably not going to be logging 30 minutes and pushing for all-star games. So around Luka Doncic, it's like LeBron James over the last 15 years. He can sit in the corner, play his defense, and really just elevate his skills in that small role. Playing for the Boomers next year, it's a very good question. If Patty is still going around and Joe still has a step and we still have those lead playmakers, then I think it can be a very vital piece when we get to the World Cup next year and maybe even start. We mm. saw him in the Olympics, didn't we? Really starting to get his first opportunity with the team. He played some good minutes. But I don't know what your take is, Greg, but the Boomers for mine are in a very interesting state. They need to transition away from being so reliant on Paddy and Joe. Mm. And Josh is definitely one of the guys they need to step up. Oh, and I think, yeah, you're right. Like that's going to be, you've got Dyson Daniels coming through, Josh Green, even a lot. What's Dante doing at Barcelona? Mm. He's and that's the really interesting, well. yeah, with uh, Aaron Baines. Tyrese Proctor at yeah, this year. Correct. Like, there's a lot of, you're completely right. Like, I think. Brass Cotton. <laughs> potentially. Get yeah, that done. Potentially. But. Um, Matisse Thibel is obviously yeah. very good. Um, but yeah, I think it, it is an, an interesting where those guys, like even Paddy, Paddy's like a, a playmaker, a scorer, like from his days at San Antonio and they've revolved around us. Even Joe is like a playmaker mm. where yeah. a lot of these guys who are uh, reaping the rewards of incredible talent, which you're not going to happen at the World Cup sort of stage. You know, no. like how do they do that? But in saying that, you look at like a guy like Matisse Thibel who was pivotal in getting that bronze medal who at Philadelphia yeah, Doc's benched him is completely has no but prior to that has given no opportunity but sort of flourishes in an international system because at the end of yep. the day they're ball players like they yeah. you know at college they're still doing that but how hard, like how hard is that to back acclimatizing and transition back I into that I think climb. um I feel like Josh Green might have a similar Matisse Leibel mm. thing where he's a has an, a, like his role at Philly Matisse was very distinct D yeah. hustle yeah hit an open shot very similar to Josh Green but then when you put him in an environment where he actually has a bit more responsibility maybe he will flourish yeah. but why that's so yeah. intriguing that they've gone alright PJ Tucker why well, can I love PJ Tucker's game and I think it's sort of that story where you, you can see every single time now it's like he hasn't scored in like 242 minutes and it's like mm. getting a, a record in that regard and that's <laughs> not his primary role like I'm like he, he, he was like not a renowned shooter but he had the capacity to shoot of three but how They've completely just gone, nah, PJ Tucker over Matisse Thibault. Like. They've remixed that Rockets team from five years ago. You've got Doc yeah. Rivers. Well, not Doc Rivers was in Houston, but you've got Daryl Murray, James Harden is there. Embiid is on and off fitness. Tobias Harris is one of the most overpaid players in the yep. NBA for what he does. And you're right, like Matisse Thibault for mine needs to get out of Philly. Like imagine him on Toronto, like a oh. smart team that knows how to use him with a great coach, playing in Cleveland as their fifth starter. There are so many opportunities for Matisse and he's a free agent after this year. So 
hopefully oh, he can yeah. get some money and find a new home because yeah like i left philly when he was just starting his career and he was the hot new australian thing back when philadelphia liked australians yeah um but that's just gone by the wayside now and similar to ben and philly right he had one bad playoff series and it's just been pushed to the backside, and because he can't shoot the ball at a great clip, mm. Philly has yeah. gone around him. And again, I'm skeptical the Sixers will uh, find their niche and really get into swing this season. And again, under Doc Rivers, it just looks like Matisse isn't going to get his Who chance. Who do we all choose? Pre the you choose Brooklyn. Yeah, and they're back. <laughs> they're all right. Ben Simmons they're, they're is at 500. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Ben Simmons is better. Yeah. I think I went Mavs just because I was being a yeah, <laughs> fanboy. I went Milwaukee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So everyone's. Still, it's only a quarter of the way through. Yeah. Um, some other Australians in the NBA, um, uh, to name a few, we've already we talked about Paddy. Uh, ben Simmons has been showing that he can uh, get back to not the same level, but he's on the way for sure, mm. Ben. Yeah, he has. It's been up and down for Ben, I think, holistically over the past three or four weeks. Though we've seen him play better right? over the past fortnight. He's getting those stat lines back to what he was doing in Philly, and not that stat lines are everything because they're not. But it's indicative of someone that just looks more confident. He's finding his feet. He's, again, just making a few glimpses of the plays that we saw in Philly, getting the rebound, pushing and going, creating threes for Durant. And defensively, he's starting to trust his back and his knee. You can just see him getting more confident. So, again, I think for NBA teams out there, give Ben Simmons another 12 months yep. and he'll be back to what he was. Whether Brooklyn has the infrastructure yes. and the patience, patience sorry, and... I don't know, the collective group to allow him to prosper, I personally doubt. So maybe it would be best for Ben. Like we said, Matisse, imagine him in Toronto. Imagine yeah. him playing in Cleveland on a good team that's smart and selfless. So I think for Ben's career, give it another 12 months, it's just a case of whether what happens in Brooklyn over the next few months is chaotic or whether they can finally pull it together. Yeah, I, I hope... I actually think he's in the perfect scenario now because I think he has to be the third guy and he, he can primarily play that facilitator role. Um and so with a Kevin Durant or like he, he's not required to score like if he does score 15 or 20 sweep even like yesterday it's overshadowed like Durant goes for 40 and I have a quick look and, and he's got two eleven and 8 and so like you look at that and go as a bona fide all-star potential you know getting paid a lot of money what what does that bring you but if they're winning games it sort of subsides and you mm. don't actually worry about that statistical outlook and That's which right. is the perfect scenario but I think, yeah, I, I, I think it what's been uh, refreshing is seeing like say a guy, I think Markeith Morris, his teammate, sort of being like we're so quick to slander and talk crap, you know, about um, how he hasn't played well and it's so early in the season. And it is, like you literally think like maybe not to the same level of Clay Thompson with and Achilles and ACL injuries and missing two years, but playing at that high level um, and and trying to find his feet where he didn't play basketball for a considerable amount of time. Um, yeah, we're so quick. Even uh, an Anthony Davis, you know, like yep. I was quick to be like, bum. Dumb. Like he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like finish. he's to then, now he's reminded us in the last six games, I just spoke to Matt Nielsen the other day where he was like, man, he is a beast. Like he's like, Going back to his sort of like, yeah, arguably one of the best players. Now, obviously. Shame he's on one of the worst teams in the league. Correct. And can he stay healthy? But yeah, yeah, it's sort of we're very quick to go, yeah, as soon as they fall off, we're able to slander him. Yeah, and um, I think with Ben as well, he's playing the five this year, yeah. which he never did in Philly. That's like, crazy. And defensively, he's been a bit lost this year. Yeah, But it'd be like asking Greg High five years to go, play the five man for the Wildcats. He did a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <it's fine. laughs> like you just can't compete with those big boys inside and Ben has the size, he has the intellect to catch up. But again, I was in Philly when Brett Brown was trumpeting all the time, Ben's a point guard, Ben's a point yeah. guard, Ben's a point guard. And he was the point guard in offense and he defended wings on defense. He wasn't banging inside. He wasn't having to defend yeah. centers and doing that on this Nets team, which again is one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA. No player, not Wilt, could even get that team to play competent defense all by themselves. Yeah. Um, a, t a person that I just – I don't, didn't mean to forget him, but when we were talking about Aussies in the NBA a few weeks ago, I just completely forgot Josh Giddy existed. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, sorry. And he's that good. No, dude, you don't need to apologize. No, I thought I was Jock say Landau. Something. Jock Landau. Jock Landau. He's been bench, has he? He's been getting spot minutes, but he's yeah. been really good but when I he's, he's been sensational. He had one game where I think he even got the post-game interview yeah. with, with – um, uh, on I think TNT. he's a quite an attractive man, Josh uh, Jock Lando. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I, for some reason, I just disliked him because he was Melbourne because United. he was on Melbourne yeah. United. Um, but he's very Giddy. good. He's but Josh Giddy, um, insane, nuts. I was watching. They had a blowout game the other day, so I was watching with the kids. Uh, <laughs> the only time <laughs> you don't want to be watching 
OKC. The best yeah, and it was like on a, on a week. It might have been against Houston or something off the back. End. It was right. Houston. Houston just had beat Atlanta with that like big comeback. Talking about absolute yep. bell ends was Deontay Murray slapping that guy on the head. I was like, <laughs> what is? I, I that's why I called an early. I was like, was he like that? Like as a teammate, he's like, nah. Popovich obviously roped him in and like was able to wrangle Who'd him you call? in. Um, Matt Nielsen. Oh, Matt yeah, Nelly. yeah, and he was like, nah. That was he was able to like wrangle him in and, and control him in that way. And now he's just sort of unleashed. But yeah, like they were getting blown out, and then like Giddy just like I mean it was a blowout, but still he just like seemed like everything was so easy. Like yeah. um, for a guy that like yeah isn't like isn't deceptively quick or like he just was like quite strong. His vision like. Yeah. Talking about point guard vision, it reminds me of a Jason Kidd in the Dallas mm. Mavericks mm. day where this guy is just sort of like not really a, can has a capacity to shoot, but just, yeah, triple-double threat, leader. Um, yeah. Talking about boom, boomers, boomers, I think yeah. like that transition, that's the perfect sort of guy. Yeah. You can build the roster around him and, yeah, if you've got a couple of guys to, to surround him with, he'll be uh, he would definitely be special for sure. What's your take on where Giddy's career is going to go? Because I'm a little bit sceptical, given the OKC team just is one of the worst in the NBA. Like on a good team in five years, what do you see his role being? No, I think he'll. I think he'll. This is that's where he'll his ceiling will be. I think he'll always be. Um, like I don't think with OKC right now. I mean, it, it, all it takes is maybe Chet Holgram to be. Victor, hopefully to Victor. what that they hope he's going to be that level. Yeah. on another Shays correct like he, yeah so the thing but I think I feel like it's it's a funny old thing because it's like okay see they're just so with a small market team they just can self combust it's like Utah like no one predicted them to be well and now I feel like now they sort of come back down to reality their yeah. ownership group or GM yeah. and coach are like sick <laughs> this yeah. is what we actually wanted yeah. you know so I feel that's like okay see like you never know they could be like Ah, uh, Shea's not that good. We're going to trade him. You know, like his his draft yeah. his trade stock is at our all time high. Yeah, yeah. We, let's get nine picks for him. Right. Yeah, let's, let's go goal. that in in <laughs> the hopes that we can actually do well. So, but I I don't like even put him in another roster. Like, yeah, absolutely, put him in a a Golden State. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I feel like even that he's unless he gets traded, I still don't think they're going to trade him because it's like the Auss- Aussie way. It's like. He's not going to go in the media and slander people. Yep. I can't see him being, you know, like he's not a Ben Simmons with this outgoing personality. And that market, like OKC, isn't like as brutal as what a Philly or a Boston is. So he can sort of just be in the wings and yeah. happy enough. I can't ever see him going, oh, I'm going to be a free agent guy and, and go to a, a New York or a Yep. It's LA. Like yeah. It's very cyclical, isn't it? You know, he's going to get through three years. They'll throw $150 yep. million dollars at him. Yep. And of course, you're going to sign that and you'll give it three more years. And if they're still no good then, and Giddy has the capital, then he'll be ringing up more Donovan and saying, hey, let's get me out of here and go somewhere else. Mm. But you're right. He'll get that contract extension, lock yeah, away that money, fine. and then phase God, on to God. the next career. Some nice money. Here. Yeah, some nice money. It's <laughs> not as good as 250 bucks <laughs> after a game, though, is it? <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. 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 Nah, no one, ATA, not listening. <laughs> um, let's, well, let's say NBA while we're there. Uh, Lakers had a pretty nasty loss. I'm so happy um, when I see against the, and, and lost at the buzzer today against the Pacers. Mm. Um, Greg, have you been a part of some, uh, some losses where you're up big and sort of crumbled and somehow lost the game in the end? Um, Anyone's, any games stick out to you? Yeah, there's been a couple, but nothing like to that stand. I think one time we're on the road against Gold Coast Blaze, we were now defunct, and we were like up 24. And um, yeah, they went like they had like James Harvey, I think maybe a Mark Worthington, uh, Andres Delion, like guys that just could like even a Chris Goulding when they were like younger. So they had the capacity. Um, but I enjoy it because Lakers, this is becoming a more common theme. Mm. So like I enjoy this. So have had a couple. I've been the reason of a loss. Um, we what played Townsville. Yeah, got got brought on. Uh, there might have been foul trouble or something, so they brought me on with like a minute left, uh, and I turned it over, and then like got blown by defensively. Then got fouled, missed both free throws, and then the very next possession, um, I overhelped Leon Henry hit like a three. Um, I literally like I I actually use it in one of in my presentations <laughs> like about not really focusing on that like the next game we played earlier where I had maybe the best game of my career but um after that game I was in the ice bath 
and I was thinking, oh, you know, when they're like, they're like, oh, it's not one play. Like, you, you, yeah, you're, yeah. you're not the Combination reason. the entire game. I was like, no, nah, <laughs> <laughs> I lost us the game. Yeah. Like, there is no way. Like, I had five opportunities to, to put this to game to To not lose bed. the game. Yeah, and I, like, clearly did to the point where I actually overhelped. Um, and it was actually why I got off social media after games because, like, I remember being in the ice bath and people were like, your mother is the worst. <laughs> and, like, you know, you should go end yourself and i was like this yeah. is actually like really brutal but yeah. um so talking about collapses that was my most yep. <laughs> significant collapse ben you've been a part of any <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I guess At my rec league games yeah. no again i think the biggest story i've got was soccer related not basketball we lost a, a semi-final up two nil with 10 minutes left and we lost three two. Oh, yeah so we conceded rough. three goals in just over 13 minutes yep and that was when i was like under 18s the highest level i ever got to playing soccer mm. Momentum, and man. Yeah, Momentum. That was the uh, oh. end of my burgeoning, very bad soccer career. I don't you? think so. I can't. Nothing comes to mind. I'm sure it would have happened, just because a lot of the teams I played on, non was that good. Like yes, non okay. could score, and so I like we used to win games like 18 to 16. Yeah, you wow. Know, just grind them out. Like sort what of. my son's score line is. <laughs> yeah, like, mate, they, we won six two on Saturday. Yeah, there so you go. Yeah, well yeah. done. <laughs> so when you're when it's low scoring and you're you can't score much. Yeah. You can easily lose yeah, games at okay. the end there, especially if they get hot. <laughs> so, anyways, let's not dwell on my um, basketball career. Let's talk about Zion's uh, basketball career. Who uh, I was very surprised that he had done this. So, what was it? The f- in the first hundred games, the only person to match that number was Michael Jordan in terms mm. of the amount of points. It's pretty crazy. It and is another one here. He's averaging twenty-five points on sixty percent shooting. No one's ever done that through their first hundred games. Yeah, insane. So insane. Just there was not even a Shaquille O'Neal. No, not yeah, even Shaq. Wow. Yeah, well, there was a lot of talk around Zion if he was ever going to be the man that they thought he was going to be. That that season in Duke where he was like, just couldn't touch him, couldn't go near him, he's just too much of a beast. Everyone thought he's basically going to come in the NBA and break the sport because no one's ever seen this sort of specimen before. I mean, Shaq was sort of a bit like that, but... Then he got injured. He'd put on some some weight. He didn't he didn't look like in the in the best shape. And people thought, oh man, maybe this is it. Like he's not ever going to be that guy. But he's showing that he can still, when he does play, when he's healthy, he's just an absolute monster. It's remarkable. I remember the year he was at Duke. I was in the US that year, and I actually went to the Duke Carolina game when right. he blew out his shoe. Yeah. I don't know if you remember. Oh that. yeah, yeah, yeah. When he stepped on the court and blew out his shoe. So I was down in Charlotte for All Star Weekend, and the game was like two days after All Star. So we went up and watched the game, and honestly, it was like an R&B club in the game. There were hundreds of NBA execs in execs in there. Yeah, all the college kids were selling tickets. Was it wasn't Obama there? Yeah, Obama was there. Yeah, I think Jordan was there. I forget exactly which NBA players, but a couple of them hang How around. How do you get tickets? Media creds. Oh mm. wow! Mm. So yes, I paid big dollars for them, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but that was yeah, that was just one of the craziest environments I've ever been into. And this kid was a rock star. Mm. And you're right, he's missed all this time since. And when he gets out on the court, he's amazing. But yeah, what do you think, Greg? As someone that's that big and so burly, do you think that he has the body frame to hold up and play 15 nah, years? No, not really. But I think even you talk about sports science and getting all that sort of stuff. I think that's the uh, added element. I think like I, I worry about like a Shet Holgram, but then like I'll look at like a Kevin Durant who I was like, nah, he's way too skinny and then he's fine. Yeah, um, nah, he's, yeah, I think... Is that going to be sustainable over a long period of time? I don't know. But again, it's like, will it be just for a period of time, which is the playoffs? Like, I think so. And that's like, oh, I love the Pelicans. I'm like, I actually love yeah. that team. Like, if there's a team, barring, you know, because I love the Bulls as a kid, so I haven't jumped off the bandwagon. Um, like, as a team that I'm like, I would hope they win a championship. Oh, it's like them because I'm like, they've built their roster. You've got, like, I love Brandon Ingram because I'm like, he left the Lakers. They didn't like him. He's doing yeah. doing really well. CJ McCann. Calm, underrated, I think. Really good. Jose Varado, like, I don't know, that's his last name, but I'll just say <laughs> that. His, we all know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, is like... A little an, thief. Yeah, it's just a, an absolute little menace. And then, like, even a guy like Jonas Valachusis, like, love the slick yeah. hair, Brad Pitt, Fury look. Like, mm. just guys that are just, like... Are they going to win a championship? I'm not sure. Like, um, And I hope they don't go, we're just going to blow the team up. But yeah. it's an exciting team for sure. Yeah, no, that's good. Um I think that might be all the NBA stuff. Any other NBA things you want to talk about, Ben? No. Let's I'm talk about the NBL oh. then. 
Perth and cool. Melbourne. So Perth, who who knows what's happening at the Perth Wildcats? Um, I'm just looking at Greg's notes on the run sheet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. So what? Yeah, okay. What would you do, Greg, with the Perth Wildcats? Because currently, what they have, yes, they might. They might squeak into the playoffs at the moment. They might, yeah, might make some noise there, but they don't look. They no, they're they have definitely no business not winning. No, nah, they're not the championship moment. contenders no. at all. And I think if you're looking, uh, what do you expect from a Wildcats team that they have to be championship contenders? I think, yeah, if you're going, oh, I hope we we float into six, so then we play in a play-in yeah. tournament. I, f- you know, that just shows your culture. Like I feel like that's shifted. So, I would, you know, like. For me, and and when you're saying you're pulling the trigger, like you're looking at near, it's nearly coming up to the halfway mark of the year. Um, what they're five and six, so 20, what fourteen games is a halfway mark, and so this is a pretty pivotal piece here. And it's funny you sort of say, obviously it shows I'm like this is a really critical time, but yeah, it's funny they go to a Brisbane team that's uh, under siege, um, who's just been pantsed. Um, and so they go against them, which is sometimes always it can go both ways. And I and I query, and I will obviously speak about Brisbane, um, per the run sheet, but you know there. And then you go to New Zealand, um, who are obviously the hottest team at the moment, and really show what can be done. And so if they win, they go to an O, like they can really change the season around. Now yeah. if they go one and one, I still think you have to go like it's expected to win Brisbane and New Zealand, and it's it's a ro- tough road trip for sure. Mm. Now if they go O and two, then it's like. You're going all hell for leather and, and you're blowing that team up. And I think they, they need to because I don't think, even if they win 2-0, I still don't think, yeah, that might change the way they're going up. But the way that they're going right now, I don't think that's a championship winning team in terms of a best of five series. And why I say that, here's where I would make some changes Um I think uh, responsibility is uh, going on a lot of players who are who are underperforming currently. Um, yep. And so two of those ones, I'd say Brady Manick and, and Thomas. Um, yep. Now, yep, they're imports and there's some clear deficiencies. Um, you know, I look at who would be perfect is Brantley from New Zealand, right? Like absolute beast, uh, pick and roll sort of specialist in terms of rolling into the hoop, uh, rim presence and a defensive guy. I would... Uh, potentially, well, I'd get rid of those two guys and combine their salaries to try and get just a legit five man. See the, who's available. If if there is someone available, I'm not just trying to get a guy like I don't, like a Lee that's at Melbourne United and who's like, okay, could he be good? I'd you, you need a certain like if you had a Miles Plumley sort of guy who apparently is just he is. I, around I, I spoke to Dan, he's he's committed to playing in our Masters comp in Adelaide next year in October. So. Now, I don't know if he's in game shape because he messaged the group at 5.30 in the morning <laughs> saying, I'm at the hospital with one of my mates who fell into a fire pit. So that just shows his current <laughs> okay. state. So maybe we don't go for a Miles Pomley. But someone of that stature, you know what I mean, that, um, you know, a Sean Long, a guy where he's going to be an offensive threat and, and do that, you're losing two roster spots there, obviously, and then I'm elevating LT into the four. Yeah. Um, I love what Jesse's bringing, but for a guy that's my best mate, but it's 36, 37, like, and it was a really good sort of thing. John really sort of said, that's my safety net. That's like my 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 blanket, knowing what I'm going to get Break him. the glass. Yeah, but yeah. like, he's playing major minutes, like yep. early in the year. Like, you, you want him to, 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 to play it out. Um, I think this is at the point, and I've spoken about it before, mentioned it in the past. LT is at this critical point and he's like, what, what is he doing? Yeah. And so I think, uh, yep, in him to play in the NBA, is he going to be a four man? No, nah, more likely not. Um, but in this league, and this is what he's uh, doing currently, I'd be, if I was the coaching staff, I'd be getting clips of Xavier Cooks, Mitch Creek, um, Keanu Pinder, uh, undersized guys who are in that position and, uh, and going, mate, uh, all three of those guys, bar Mitch Creek, is a, like an okay shooter, but not like a still a dead yeah. dead eye dick. Where I'm like, you know, like I'm still hedging my bets on him. Definitely uh, yeah. improve, but I'm going. How are they successful? Like, and that is straight rim running, grabbing the ball off the the rim and and just getting on the hoop. O boards, transition buckets. And he could do that. Fr- he absolutely can. can. But like right now, I just don't see that, and mm. so. My fear is like he's gone, I've made the NBA draft pick and um, look, if we don't have a good result, 
I'm out doing next year. I'm doing G League stuff and I'm doing that. I've got one foot out the door. That's my fear. And I could be absolutely completely wrong. Um, and so for me, if that was what he's thinking, I'm like, hey, we need you to actually step up. I've got yep. to give you a bit of responsibility. I've got to put you in that in a position to succeed and to fail um, in a good way. And so him just doing that, like I just think that's where it goes. And so that would be my, my drastic measure um, because I don't – Brady is absolutely like he's he's improved, but now I think like Thomas has regressed, and so I just think what you're getting in those two positions when you're looking across the league of having bona fide guys like Bryce is obviously at a level. I was looking at the statistics, and then you've got obviously uh, Todd Blanchfield's three points, I think, or two point five below his average, and shooting yep. percentages down. Mitch Norton, his shooting percentages down, um, and and points average. I think for Mitch. Uh, you know what? What's hurting him is like um, I would love for them for their defensive makeup to shift a little bit. Like if you watch back the games, I don't really see him guarding a man ninety four feet, right? Mm. Like terrorizing guy. I don't see him denying the ball. Um, you know, like these are like at the end of the day, like there's no doubt that the. Um, the 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 brand of Walcott's basketball has changed. Yeah, no doubt. But John even said at the start of the season, like what wins championships, defense and rebounding, and they and then struggling in that. So I would have to go back into that. So mm. yeah, look, obviously a few things. I never like you know, being the person I am, I never like talking about people's jobs. But if you're in order for them to win a championship, and I think we can all agree here, like that's not a team that's going to win a championship currently. No, but no. I think the reality is they're just no matter what they do, they're not winning a championship this year. Sydney and New yeah. Zealand are just on a different level and. You, I'm always interested with the Luke Travers discussion because he's, he's 20 years old or yep. 19 trying to find his foot playing the most minutes in a professional league for the first time in his career but he's not people on are a, scouting him yeah but yeah. he's not on a team that's conducive to doing what he does and that's what well. I'd even be looking at if, you, if you're in a position to go we're not going to win a championship then you're touting him as going if he's going to be here is he going to be the face of the franchise and mm. what I mean by that because currently is he going to make the NBA the chances are going to be quite tough. Like, yeah, he got drafted, but... Uh, and I'm not being an arsehole here. Etienne Majok got drafted. No, the odds of him making the NBA are right. like 10%. So then I'm going right now, hey, we're giving you the keys. Like, because, yeah, absolutely, Bryce, hopefully Bryce will be here for three to four to five, but you need a, a Robin to a Batman. Yeah. Um, and so here's, like, that's that Mitch Creek. Like, embrace that role, you know, like, be... Be the face, not only the franchise, be the face of the league, which I have no doubt in my mind Luke Travers has that capability. Like he's a smart player, um, has the physical attributes at this level to dominate. His shot is consistent enough. Like I I wouldn't mind him missing a a few more, but I just think that intent or like hunger in terms of going like he has to play like um, if I I don't play well, it's not I'm – I'm not going to be in the NBA. I don't have a contract. Mm. Um, and so I think forcing that and putting that, that um, yeah, like making him a foreman and saying, hey, because I think if you looked at when he was successful, when everyone was like, geez, like Luke Travers, this young kid, was the year when Trev Gleason was here and they had a bunch of injuries and they made LT start. like, yeah. And they were starting him as a DP, as a foreman. And people were like, oh, against him, against Mitch Creek. And he was performing. Yeah. Like, he was doing well. Um, he can still be a playmaker at the four. I think, like, we're always in this notion, like, even, like, swing men and four men. Like, it's changed. Like, we don't have traditional fives. Like, yeah, um, yeah Brantley is that traditional five. Hence why I'm like, they need to go back to that sort of position. Um I think that's what they've lacked, you know, like you haven't had a really dominant sort of Angus Brandt beast, you know, um, even Tom Jervis played that role perfectly as the five man. Um, like I love Majok um, in that setting. So, but again, like to have a bit of a, in a defensive presence as well, bit of a, a uh, change of shots and, and currently the Walkers don't have that. They don't. They really don't. Um, and like you said, they will have to make some changes if they do want to make any sort of noise. I mean, they've done it before. They brought, um, they've, br- they've, brought, they've brought people in mid-season and that's turned their team yeah. around. It's happened, but it doesn't happen very often and, and um, hard to bring a new guy in at the best of times, let alone a team that's struggling mm-hmm. and um, make a big change. Um, look, lots of, you, 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 you want to say something, Ben? 
Awesome. No, no. I'm oh, sorry. I thought I think, you were just. I thought I you were just waving at me. We just need to tee Greg up for two minutes about the Brisbane comment he's got in our. Oh uh, yes, that's right. Here. Last thing, because we got to because we got to wrap up. Yeah. Um, Greg has written on our run sheet, Brisbane dash McKinnon dash what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just. I don't understand that situation. Like it, it, it confuses me so much. Like. Bias aside, like I felt like they were like, all right, let's get rid of Devondrick Walker and use him as a bit of a scapegoat. You know, like he's an import, um, and you know we're we're struggling uh, defensively, whatever it may be. And so you get rid of this guy, and then yeah, let's get rid of James Duncan, like two days or whatever before we play uh, New Zealand, and then get pants. Like I think at some point, one, I actually, I'm not uh, like I'm not happy that they like that people get embarrassed but I actually am satisfied in some way that it shows like uh you know the roster like the the McKinnon gave this roster to James Duncan it's not as easy as what Mm. it looks like that any normal pundit a pundit could go yeah I can do this like you know like McKinnon just comes in and then like is like oh yeah it's actually quite difficult like this is the roster like yeah they were missing two pieces and I think this is going to be the the thing which is like the elephant in the room is that uh, the most significant piece of why they're not successful is they've invested a lot of money into two players and that is Aaron Baines and Tyler Johnson. Um, And Aaron Baines would be eating up a lot of money in that regard. And I'm all for a a feel-good story. And at some point though, you go, well, is that what we're giving to him? like outweigh what he's giving to us and so like a guy i think what his numbers might be maybe 13 and 6 off the top of my head um yeah i know he's the face of the league right like and prior to it pre-season we're like hey how good is this and i'm like absolutely like you know there's a guy that's been open about his mental health battles in that regard for sure but then i'm like this is a performance uh industry right like any other player around the league if it, uh, an import like a Brady Manic, like they're talking about being on the line now. Obviously, he's Australian, but you know, for that criticism and then Tyler Johnson, who obviously had this NBA pedigree, it shows like the league's actually pretty and tough. Was good in the NBA, it wasn't like he right just scraped in and comes in. But then the same deal, you're like, man, like uh, has been given the keys as well. Like it's been given an opportunity. I'm like, man, you brought in a guy like Devondre Walker that was an NBL one contract that like w- was getting paid peanuts. Yep. If he's given the same opportunity, like, would they just do as well, you know? So, like, all that sort of stuff. Now, look, again, there's a l- other storylines. Nathan Sobey's not playing to to what his contract – and understand he's got a more significant injury and he's still working back from it. Understand that. But, again, I just, like, look at that whole roster and it's like, oh, sweet, let's just fire a guy. But when you look at it, you're like, that was a scapegoat. And now, yep. like, what happens? And now you have no identity and we've just basically thrown a guy under the bus. Um, and I feel for a guy like a James Duncan who – um. Yeah, it, it just it's mind boggling, and I look at that and just go, if the Warhawks lose to that roster, I'd be going, geez. It's like, very strange, isn't it? They start the season zero and five, keep the coach. Yeah, they win a couple of games, they sack the coach. Yeah, they've got no point guard. When I say point guard, like oh, air quotes, old school point guard that couldn't run the show on offense. Baines was a great player, and it's great that he's back in the league, but he's not performing up to his no. pay packet just yet. And then the thing that everyone keeps talking around with this team is the front office and the ownership. Yeah. No one around the league respects the front office of the ownership. No. And that's why we've seen it with the media over the past week. They're not defending the Brisbane front office or ownership at all. It's defending the coach. And that's just – it's funny this week. A lot of stuff that I've heard over the past 12 months, which I'm sure you have as well, mm. it's not getting said in the media this week, yep. but it's almost the payback for it is coming. And people are just starting to call out the leadership in Brisbane. And they've won nothing for a decade. And they keep cycling in big names and coaches. And it just leads us to the same position where, you're right, they sack their coach before going to New Zealand. They lose by 45 points. And what did that accomplish? Mm, mm, absolutely. There you go. Speaking <laughs> of New Zealand, Aaron Baines was born in New Zealand. There you go. But we claimed him because mm, he became yes. good. That's right. Because he came good. That's <laughs> right. Hello at backchatpodcast.com.au if you want to send us an email. You can email us about anything. If you want to ask Greg about, I don't know, any Life. sort of intricate secret Wildcats stories that he has, he what might be able to share with us. With the vouchers? Yeah, what what yeah. Va- what store was the vouchers for? IGA, IGA, that's pretty good actually. <laughs> that's get a good although selection. no one's doing their it grocery shopping wasn't. in IGA. Um, <laughs> yeah. Or you can um, write us to us on Instagram backchat underscore. Wait, what is it again? 
Um, <laughs> oh, Backchat underscore yeah. basketball. <laughs> yeah, gee. I should know that. Backchat underscore basketball on Instagram. Uh, give us a follow there. Send us a message. Um, hey, is Greg for not showing up? Whatever you want. Um, <laughs> and uh, we'll catch you again next week. Sounds good.